everybody. Hi there. And welcome to another Heart and Parcel English and Cooking class. Hello. <laughs> My name is Claire and every week we will be cooking lots of delicious dishes from the Heart and Parcel cookbook. The Heart and Parcel cookbook is made by our beautiful learners and also some of our Heart and Parcel staff. Every week you will learn English language. You'll learn English reading, writing, speaking, listening, and you will learn some delicious recipes as well. Hello everybody. Hi Aklama, Najat, Zohra, Doa. Great, everyone's here today. Juliet, Maram, Sia Priya, Anastasia. Hello. Oh, you know, I did, I thought everyone was going to be in the sun today. Hi Lisa. <laughs> it's great to see you all. Welcome to new learners as well. If this, this is your first class, welcome. And uh, I hope you enjoy. Please subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the class and like the video. If you have any questions tonight, you can ask our great teachers today. They are in the live chat. Just type your question and they will answer and support you straight away. If you just want to have a conversation with them, that's great too. Just type your questions or your conversation in English and they will uh, answer that, that for you. Fantastic. If this class is difficult or you want to practice English reading, Click on the subtitles CC caption below and you can follow along with me. It's been a really, really wonderful week this week. Lots of sunshine and lots of different dishes that I've been cooking. And I'm really excited to share with you this one. This is going to be a wonderful dish for the sun. I hope that you're uh, going to enjoy it. Are you ready to get started? I have two questions for you. Question number one. I think I know the answer already. How are you feeling today? How are you feeling today? More information, why? Question two. Who is the best cook in your family? Who is the best cook in your family, why? Question one, how are you feeling today? And question two, who is the best cook in your family? Please write in the live chat if you are watching this now. If you are watching back, please pause the uh, video and you can give your answers spoken or you can write down, up to you. Off you go. I'm going to answer my questions. Um, how am I feeling today? I'm feeling really, really hot, really, really hot. But I'm so happy that it's sunny. Today I sat out in the garden and I drank a really nice cold drink of um, soda water and lemon. It was so refreshing. I really, really just relaxed and enjoyed myself. Um, maybe I'm feeling a little bit sunburned, not sure. And number two, who is the best cook in my family? Actually, I would say my dad. Why? Because he is very, very clever with using lots of leftover food. When we have dinner and we have loads of food left over, the next day, he can use um, all the different ingredients to create something really special. What about you guys? Hanan, you feel more energetic and motivated. Yes, good. I do, I feel the same actually. I feel the same. Hi Nabila. Aisha and Doa, you're both tired because of the housework and fasting. And yes, Doa, good point. It's really, th it's, it's really thirsty today. Fantastic. 
and then you your husband is the best italian chef great i think i think that i i agree with you there um oh Masuma, your mom cooks food and lots of different cakes. Wow, that's great. Did you learn all of your cooking from her? I bet you did. Aklima, every day you're cooking something special for your family and Ifta. Great, that's so nice to see. That's so nice to hear. Fantastic. Well done. Really, really good answers, guys, and really, really interesting ways of describing uh, your reasons um, for your feelings. Anastasia, you're feeling good. Oh, you're being very diplomatic. Your mum is the best, but your dad is also a great cook. To the best of both. <laughs> okay. Are you ready for today's lesson? I have another question for you. I'm going to give you one minute, one minute, to write down all of the ingredients on the table. Everything you can see. We have a lot today. Write in the chat box, in the live box, or you can speak out loud, or you can write a list. Up to you. You can pause the video now and speak out later. Are you ready? In three, two, One, go! What can you see today? Let me shift those around for you. Some interesting ingredients. Very interesting ingredients. I'm going to move my utensils today. Lots and lots of green things. <laughs> Keep going, keep writing as much as you can, as much as you can. If you're thinking, oh, this is so easy, go further. Describe each of the ingredients. How would you describe all of the things on there? Go further, what, what can you see? How many of those things? What's the color? What's the shape? What's the type of ingredient? Keep going, fantastic, some great answers there. Well done. Keep going. Don't worry about your spelling. Your teachers will correct it for you. Brilliant. Keep going. Good. Listen to the teachers asking the questions as well. Fantastic. 10 seconds. Nine seconds. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stop. Yes. Fantastic, everybody. Well done. Well done. Some really, really good answers. You're getting so good at this game now. I need to, I think I need to change the game. This is too easy for you now. <laughs> okay, we're going to go to the board and I'm going to show you all of the things that are on the table. A long list down here and we're going to start first with this one. How do we say this one? Tuna. Tuna. And I don't know if you saw teacher Naomi asking about the tuna. What is the tuna in? Is it fresh tuna? We say in the UK, tinned tuna. Tinned tuna. I'm going to put the adjective of each of the ingredients here. Tinned tuna. And the next we have, oh, bread. Ugh. A big stack of bread. What kind of bread is it? What kind of bread is it? It's white bread. White bread. And I think a lot of you were saying pieces of bread. That's good. But we actually say slice. 
slice of bread. So we have white sliced bread. White sliced bread. Good. So far, next one. Onion. Onion. What kind of onion? What colour? Mm. Purple? We say red. Red onion. Red onion. Good. Next one we have ah, chili. You know, on a hot day, this is really, really good ingredient to cook with. Chili. What kind of chili? Green chili. Green chili. Fantastic. We have a whole load of herbs on the table and this one, coriander. You guys know that coriander is my favourite herb. And I'm going to describe this. How would you describe this? I think all herbs are green if they are fresh. So I'm just going to say fresh coriander compared to dry coriander. I don't think anyone caught that because I didn't put it on the table. <laughs> that was a, one, a little trick one for you. Soy sauce, soy sauce. And what kind of soy sauce? We're going to go for light soy sauce. Light soy sauce. This is a lot saltier than dark soy sauce. It's saltier than dark soy sauce. Did you guys see the eggs? Mm. How would you describe that? How would you describe that? It's just an egg, isn't it? Most of cooking usually uses just a chicken's egg. So we don't need to put any description in there. It's fine. Now, I'm sure you saw this, but maybe you thought that it wasn't what you think it was. Bulgur wheats. Bulgur wheat. And this is a kind of, um, how to describe it? Like kind of like rice, kind of like couscous, quite similar, a grain, something that you use there uh, when you are cooking, usually with meat or vegetables or um, other things. Bulgur wheat is going to be coarse, coarse. What does coarse mean? It means very thick. Bigger, bigger than fine. So fine is small, bulgur wheat, fine bulgur wheat. Big is coarse bulgur wheat. Actually, you can use fine as well. And I will show you that one in a minute. Then we have mint. Mmm. And we have parsley. Fantastic. I'm going to describe them as fresh because I think it's the same as coriander. Oh, this is a new ingredient for us in this, in these lessons. Pomegranate molasses. Pomegranate molasses. It's kind of like a sweet Sour syrup, a sweet sour syrup, very sticky, and you can use it in lots of different things. I think I, I know a lot of you will be using this one in your stews or your soups or your salads or even desserts. And then we have, did you see this dark color spice here? This one is 
sumak, sumak, and it's a very, very sour uh, spice that you can put and sprinkle over uh, maybe fish or cucumber or something like that, something fresh, very nice. Next, I've got two types of oil. This one, olive. This one, vegetable. This one is for salad. And this one is for frying. So I'm going to put that one over there and that one over there. I have those two different types, olive and vegetable. And finally, we have our wonderful lemon. Here we are, nice and yellow. Have I missed anything? What have I missed? Well done. Tomatoes. So we have some really nice, big, fresh tomatoes here. I'm going to add that to my list of ingredients here. Wow, fresh summer ingredients. It's going to be a really, really great uh, dish. Do you know what I'm making? Can you guess? <laughs> well, I am making for the main a really, really crispy, tasty delight. And this is a fish chop from one of our dear students, Sweetie. It's a tuna croquettes and it's really, really lovely. Very, very, very easy. And Sweetie gave us this recipe because she knew that we would really enjoy it for the cookbook. The second recipe I'm going to also make at the same time is our lovely student Layla. Layla has given us so many recipes over the past few weeks in the cookbook and she's going to give us a fantastic parsley and lemon soaked bulgur wheat salad or in other words tabbouleh. And maybe you have your own variation of tabbouleh. Maybe your mother makes it. Maybe you make it. Maybe your friends make it. Or maybe you've never made it before and you're looking forward to seeing how to do it. So, before we go, you notice I didn't give you the quantities today. I didn't tell you how much we need for the recipes. This is your task. Are you ready? I have your task for you. I would like you to watch me, listen to me make the recipe and make note of all of the quantities I use for each ingredient. For example, how much bulgur wheat, how many tomatoes, how much tuna. Listen and write down the quantities. Is it 200 grams? Is it four? Is it 10? Is it a handful? Is it a pinch? Listen and follow along writing down and I will ask you at the end. Are you ready? Let's go. So, first of all, I need a dish and I'm going to prepare my bulgur wheat for my tabbouleh. And I'm going to take 130 grams 
130 grams of bulgur wheat. With the bulgur wheat, as I mentioned before, it's quite coarse. It's quite coarse, so I want to make it smaller. So, do you remember? What is this? I want to make it smaller. So, I'm going to... Blend. I'm going to blend the bulgur wheat. Good, Masuma, you got that one right. <laughs> so now it's a nice, finer quality, and I'm going to pour in my. Bulgur wheat. Next, with the tabbouleh salad, Layla really likes to soak, to soak the bulgur wheat with lemon juice and olive oil. So she asks us to take two lemons, two lemons, and I'm going to. Do you remember? What, what am I doing? You can say it in the chat or say it out loud. I'm the lemon. Did you get it? Good. I'm Squeezing. Well done, Nabila. Fantastic. Well done, Doha. Just taking away the seeds there. And finally, little bit more. Fantastic. Next, I'm going to take my olive oil and I think I'm just going to do a little drizzle of olive oil over the top. A little drizzle over the top of the bowl of wheat. Mix it all together. When Layla first told me how to make this, I thought, this is really strange. Why are we doing this? Because normally I would cook the bulgur wheat, but this helps you to soak it up, to soak it. And it gives a really nice crunchy flavor to the salad. I'm going to put this to one side to leave it to soak up. Next, let's start on our fish, tuna fish chop. The things out the way, there's so many ingredients today that there's not enough space on the table. With my tray, I'm going to take my tins of tuna and what is this? With this, I will open the can. Hi, Paramita! <laughs> What will I open? Mm. 
one. Nice, Akrima. Tin opener, Khadija. Good. Tin opener, we can say, or we can say can opener. Both are fine. And if you use both or use tin opener, it's fine. People will understand. So use a can or tin opener to open the can of tuna. That's one, that's two, and you will need three tins of tuna. Three tins of tuna. You might find that if you are talking about a drink, you wouldn't say a tin of Coca-Cola, you would say a can of Coca-Cola. Just opening the last can there. Before I put it into my um, big dish, I need to drain the tuna with what are these? <laughs> I'm pouring my tuna into my what? Can you remember? I will accept two answers for that <laughs> because you can use one or the other. Fantastic. Khadija almost. You've got the bowl. Massima, good bowl. But what is this? Good, Aisha. I'm draining the tuna with my... Oh, this is a sieve. A sieve. S-I-E-V-E. -E. Normally used for flour, but today it has tuna in it. This is just to take all that moisture out from the tinned tuna. And I'm gonna pop that right there. Great. Sweetie was telling me about this. She uses tuna for her fish chop for two reasons. One, it's cheaper than other fish and also it is healthier than other fish. I mean, these are really cheap. I, it's all together, it's about one pound fifty. And this makes around about, I think I made 15 croquettes the other day. So it's good. I'm going to take one onion, two onions. And what I want to do, I really, really can't stress this enough, really finely, finely chop the onion. If you are feeling tired, you could actually blend the onion for a little bit because you want it really, really small. I'm actually going to change my knife to make it big so I can chop more finely. And the reason for this is because you want it, when it's in the mixture, to give flavor to all of the croquettes. Oh, do you know what's happening? Oh, I'm crying. Do you cry when you chop onions. 
What do you do to solve that problem? My mother told me that when I chop onions, I should uh, wet the knife. So put the knife in some water and then you won't cry. Do you have any other advice for me? <laughs> so you're going to need two of these onions. What am I doing? What am I doing? I am peeling the skin, the layer of the onion off. Making it really small. Maybe I should wear goggles. You know when you go swimming? And that way, your eyes won't cry. <laughs> but I'm not sad. I'm not sad. I'm really happy. Shopping away. Working for my dinner tonight. Just pop that to one side there. So you want it finer than this, but for time and for my eyes, oh dear me, I'm going to pop those in there and pour them over the top. Oops. Right. Next, what I need is Next one I'm going to do is I'm going to take three green chilies, three green chilies, and you're going to cut them, cut the tops off, and cut them in half. And you want to de-seed the chilies. Just take all of the chili seeds out. And why do I do this? Well, it's because the seeds have lots and lots of heat in them. They're very, very, how would you describe that? How would you describe a chili? Very, very spicy. Very, very spicy. <laughs> oh, Sinem, I love your uh, story about how to stop onions from making you cry. I want to read it. When I was a child, my grandmother gave me some advice. When you are chopping onions, if you tell the onions, you cannot make me cry, you will never cry. Okay, onions, you cannot make me cry. Sinem, I hope you're right. I'm going to finally chop again the chilies. using my big knife again, just to really break them into tiny, tiny pieces. And sprinkle into the mix. Okay. 
finally, finally, last thing to add, well, almost, is to take some of our coriander. And again, you guessed it. Finely chop. The coriander. Adding it to the mix. Ah, fantastic. With some soy sauce, with the coriander, that was a small handful of coriander, a small handful. Now, with the soy sauce, I think I'm going to use perhaps, let's see, three tablespoons of soy sauce to give it some nice flavor. And then I'm going to grind the pepper, season with salt and pepper always. Sprinkle the salt on top. Now, here comes a really interesting part of our croquettes. You take some water, just a bowl, and with the bread, I'm going to use perhaps five slices, no, three slices of bread. Three slices of bread. Taking the bread, you dip into the water, squeeze out, and pop in there. Dip, squeeze, and add. Dip, squeeze, and add. This is a really interesting method that I didn't know about. What am I doing? One. Two, three, dip, squeeze, add. Fantastic. Moving my water to one side, using my hands, I'm going to pull all of the ingredients together. Really, really mashing, mashing the ingredients together with my hands. And what this does is it creates a really nice sticky dough that's fresh. I can smell the coriander. Then I can smell the onions. And then the tuna comes in. And it's just fantastic. It's really clever. I never knew this technique before. Sweetie taught me how to make this. So thank you, Sweetie. When you pull everything together, it should look nice and mushed like this. Wow, exciting. Yay. In a bowl, we want to get our eggs and our tray. This is the next step. We're going to need two things for this. We're going to need egg and bread, but bread crumbs. So I will take another two slices of bread and tear them up to put them into the blender. So 
going to add to the blender and to make bread crust. Buy breadcrumbs completely up to you. But I always find it's cheaper with those. Next, you're going to crack one egg. Uh, actually, maybe two. Maybe two. Two eggs into a bowl. And remember. Beets. Beets. Good. Right. I have my eggs and my breadcrumbs. And we're going to shape our croquettes. Pop that there. With your hands, take pieces of the mixture and shape in your hand to make a little patty, small patty, nice and flat. I'm going to dip it in the egg and then I will cover in breadcrumbs. Voila! Next one. What am I doing? Shaping. Shape. Then, what am I doing? Dip. Then, what am I doing? or coat in breadcrumbs. This is a really, really good dish to make with friends or family or even children. I think it's easy enough for kids as well, if you can stand them in the kitchen. <laughs> I'm going to make perhaps hmm, maybe six. Really nice. Do you remember those verbs? And I hope you're remembering those quantities. I'm going to test you at the end. It's really quite important for the lesson. <laughs> Sweetie made these for our special workshop we had here in Manchester. She demonstrated and made these in front of members of the public and the community. And they all tried it and it was so delicious. I think some of the learners will remember that day. It was absolutely fantastic. Really, really wonderful day. And there was just loads and loads of food being created. Loads and loads of food being created. Okay. So these are going to be put into a frying pan. 
to be fried. And I'm going to finish up our tabbouleh to go with it. Always, always has to look nice with a salad, I think, for sure. So I'm going to put them to one side for the moment. And I finish off my salad. By now, the bulgur wheat should be nice and chewy to be ready for the salad. Here. To this, you want to add a huge bunch, <laughs> a big handful, a large handful of parsley. And to the parsley, you want to add some mint. Now, Layla likes a lot of mint, but I prefer a smaller amount of mint. So for me, I'm just going to have a couple of leaves in here and pick them off. Now I think, was it Masuma? I can't remember. Somebody in the WhatsApp group had a really special way of plucking mint. And if you want to, you can. You can pull it through a grater and put the stalks in here and pull through and all the leaves should fall off. But these stalks are too thick, so I'm going to just continue my original way. But thank you very much, Masuma, for your great tip. I thought it was brilliant and I can't wait to try it. I wonder what everyone is cooking tonight. And I'm wondering if you're gonna change your dinner plans to maybe cook some of this. So with the parsley, again, you want to make it really, really finely chopped. And with tabbouleh, you will probably spend a good five to 10 minutes chopping. So for time, I'm just going to roughly chop but you really want to get it nice and small, small pieces mixed in with the mint. Do you remember what I'm chopping on? So I have my knife and my chopping my knife and my chopping board. Mm -hmm. That smell, all that mint, all that parsley, wow gonna be great. I'm gonna grab it and sprinkle it all over the top into my tabbouleh. Next I will take just one, just one tomato but you could obviously have more but for me it's just one and I will take out the stem in the middle and cut into chunks to add some color and some flavor to the dish. Lovely. Then taking half an onion, a red onion, just 
slice. Slice chunks of it to sprinkle over the top. Of course, you can add other things like cucumber or um, what other things can you add? Layla said lettuce. If you don't like parsley, it's completely up to you. Completely up to you. So with this, the final thing you're going to do to the salad is to add the pomegranate molasses. Fantastic. One tablespoon to drizzle over the pomegranate molasses. And of course, one tablespoon of our lovely olive oil. It wouldn't be a salad if you didn't have olive oil. And then Layla loves to add some sumac, just about one tablespoon of sumac, sprinkle over the top there. Great, almost finished for today. Now, in order to cook our delicious croquettes, you need quite a lot of vegetable oil. So I'm just going to pour that in now and pop it on a kind of medium heat. You don't want it to get too hot because you will burn the outside. And I think if you're feeling healthy, I think you can bake them. It's fine, it's fine. It's not a problem. Whilst we're waiting for that, I'm going to toss my salad. So it looks like I'm mixing, but when you mix salad, you want to toss salad, to toss salad. And always, always, so, so important, always make sure you taste the salad. Mm. That's good. No changing. That's brilliant. And I'm just going to pop a little bit of the salad onto the plate. Here. Now, with our croquettes, to check that the oil is ready, you want to add just a little piece of bread. Wow, look at that. If it fries like that, you know the oil is ready. It's getting nice and brown, isn't it? So, I'm going to add my croquettes. Oh. Do four, I think. I want to fry them for a while. I would say maybe one to two minutes. You want to make them really nice and brown on either side. Make sure 
make sure you have a kitchen towel ready to catch the oil afterwards. There we go. Oh, it smells so delicious, guys. Be careful with the hot oil, obviously. Wow. Looking great. And, you know, this can be for lunch. It can be for dinner. It can be for an after-school snack. It can be for the afternoon. It's so, so great. So cheap to make. And you can freeze it before you fry if you have lots left over. It's always a really great quick snack. I think those are about ready. I'm going to drain them. And you notice the breadcrumbs have really, really added to that nice crispy top there. Really fantastic. And last but not least, leaving them to drain off. I'm going to add them to my mix. There's some I made earlier as well. How many do I want? Am I feeling really hungry? Am I feeling a little bit hungry? I don't know. Let's see. Oh, I can put everything on. <laughs> it's my tabbouleh with tuna fish. Croquettes. And I think a nice little slice of lemon to decorate. A little garnish on top. You take the slice and ah, add on the top. Wonderful. There we have it. My tuna fish croquettes with Layla's pomegranate lemon soaked tabbouleh salad. And what an absolutely amazing summer dish that was really easy to make and good for the whole family, I think. Really, really nice. So, are you ready? I hope that you remembered all the quantities of the dish. Are you ready? Let's do a recap whilst I eat. Mmm. Mmm. So good. Sinem, it is delicious. Really, really lovely. Really, really nice. Mmm. So, quantities, are you ready? <laughs> Tuna, how many? Oh, Anastasia, you got it all. <laughs> we had three tins of tuna. Correct, incorrect. Bread. We had three plus two, five slices of bread. Did you get that one? 
<laughs> onions. We had two for the croquetas, and we had one for the tabbouleh. Chilies. Three, three green chilies. Coriander. A small handful of. A small handful of. If you're getting this all right, well done, well done. Your teachers will be marking you here. And soy sauce. Three tablespoons. Egg. I think I went for two. Two eggs. Bowl of wheat. Ah, how much? One hundred and I think I did one hundred and thirty. One hundred and thirty grams. <laughs> Mint. A. I only had a few leaves. A few leaves of mint because I think that parsley is tastier than mint. Parsley. I had a big handful or a large handful of. If you're getting this right, well done, well done. Pomegranate molasses. One tablespoon. Sumac. One tablespoon. Oil. Olive oil. A drizzle. Good. A drizzle of olive oil. And last but not least, our lemons. We had two lemons. Oh, guys, you did so well. Well done. Brilliant. I know it's not easy to follow the whole thing plus verbs, plus adjectives, plus watching and typing or even speaking out loud. So you did a fantastic job. Really, really happy with your work today. I'm going to sit and eat these. Please try them at home. If you liked it tonight, please subscribe and uh, like our video. And hopefully I will see you next week for another delicious two recipes from the Heart and Parcel cookbook. It's been a real pleasure teaching you guys tonight. Have a lovely, lovely evening and take care, all of you. Bye-bye.